Pastora Shika and I'm not even looking at this thing. You find it's not recording. Ah, boss, I, t- I transcribed like three episodes. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you couldn't radiate. I, now I was using this audio. It was insane. Anyway, let's do this. Oh, let's do not clapping. This. Yes, let's do this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I checked into Mtua's house around 10 o'clock. Eh? Is it? Yeah. No, 9.45. Nine, yeah. nine well, 9.45. 9.45. Yeah. Yeah. We have been setting up for like one hour, but that clarity that you're seeing has never been seen on the Playhouse before. I can already tell that I'm dealing with somebody who loves who loves picture quality. Yeah. Have it be visual pictures or camera pictures. It's going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, yeah. boys and girls, welcome to another session of the Playhouse. With me, I've got one of the most talented photographers in Africa. Yani, but not only that, a lot of people don't know that he was also a musician. In fact, Mutua, that's where I met you. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, you are so many other things. You're an architect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so many things that we are going to... Many lives. Many lives, eh? <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm excited about just hearing your journey how you've gotten to where you are right now, hmm. how the industry is right now, your industry. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, make some noise from Tua Maseka. <sighs> you know, normally I put videos. <laughs> you are just looking photos. <laughs> yeah, I can look at photos, actually. There's a lot, there's, yeah. There'll be a lot of secondary stuff, I think. Anyway, Moods, thank you so much for accepting to be on the Playhouse. You're welcome. Thank you for this yeah. crazy setup <laughs> and teaching teaching me and George. <laughs> I want to start this thing way back. Yeah? With the Playhouse, I always I always like starting at the beginning because me, I believe every part of the journey is important. So, let's talk about your early beginning, your childhood beginnings. Mm. Where did you grow up? Where were you born? Tell us, tell us your story. <sighs> As far back. Anyway, I born in Machakos. Actually born in Wamunyu. If you're going to be... Well, no. That's a lie. I was born in Machakos. In fact, my mom came to Nairobi to give birth to me at Mata. Mm-hmm. She was in the hospital for like four days and I didn't talk her. So she gave up. <laughs> she went back home. And that's already... I'd already delayed being born. Wow. By about a week, she was like, this guy might come anytime. So she waited a week, nothing. She just came to Mata, said, just check me in until this boy comes. Four days, till nothing. She gave up, she went back to Macha. When she was getting to Machakos like this, <laughs> labor comes. So she went straight to hospital, Machakos General Hospital. Then I was born. That's crazy. When, and, what yeah. year, and what year was this? 1984. 1984? Yeah, February. What? Mm. So how was life in Machakos? I mean, life in Machaco is pretty normal. Mm-hmm. Us guys were not necessarily poor. Mm-hmm. Not really, not even not poor. I think we were, at that time, I was born into like a well-to-do family. My dad was, had a clinic of his own. Oh, nice. In Sultan Amud. My mom was a teacher. Mm-hmm. So everything was okay. And what, and what in, and in the family, where are you? What, what, what born? What born? <laughs> oh, I'm the first born. Oh, the first I'm born. the first born. My sister is two years younger than me. Mm-hmm. No, one year younger than me. Okay. Yeah, no one year younger than me. It's just the two of you. We're just two. Okay. There my dad, a... my dad was into family planning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the reason why I ask this, eh, guys watching this playhouse are from all over the place. I've come to realize, yeah, guys, and and it's important to know that despite where you can st- where you start from, you can get to your destination. Yeah, that's true. So, okay. Where then now do you go to primary? So the thing is, so so the interesting thing for me in my childhood, like mm-hmm. what I remember, I remember playing a lot outside with my friends, stuff like that. I remember doing a lot of drawing. According to my mom, oh, I started wow. drawing at three years old. That part I don't remember. But I remember... At three years old? Yeah. Like she noticed that I was excited mm-hmm. about this. So she just made sure at my ha- the house never sad like art equipment paper whether paint. it's paper like there were p- huge rolls of paper that were my height like this my height as a kid yeah so i could literally trace myself on a piece of paper so paper there was always crayons markers paint there were all those things always in the house then on top of that she and en- she kind of enrolled me into 
into into like a class so because she was a teacher mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we were living when we started living in a place called Machakos Teachers College so one of her friends and my neighbor was an art teacher mm-hmm. so she told me now because we need to take your art serious last when i was in primo in Machakos primary yes she was like you need to be going to this teacher you get like an art tutor what so i remember so and that teacher, your mom identified your passion yeah my mom is like that like her with identifying ali and she fuels just fuels she forces it down your throat like if you pick up something and she says hmm this one looks like they like this thing ah you over it's done for you it's done it's done because she's just going to do it I mean when I was a kid as guys were enrolled into piano classes I was enrolled into piano classes my mm-hmm. sister playing the recorder I used to be taken for swimming classes not swimming classes for swimming mm-hmm. because my mom by the time we were five, according to her you needed to know how to swim <laughs> so by the time I was five, I knew how to swim yeah my sister by the time she was five, she knew how to swim extracurriculum activities yeah. galore then from there in primo there was swimming like every few days a week like maybe three or two days a week we had to go swimming there was one swimming pool in machakos at that time machakos golf club uh-huh. so thankfully my family were members then i'd go to school after school i pass by there by the swimming pool i find her she's waiting she's not swimming she's sitting on the whatever even if it's a cold day she's just waiting for me <laughs> do your whatever's swim and not for competition just yeah. she was like you need to be ready in case anything happens you can swim it's a like for us swimming was a a basic skill it's like a survival yeah, yeah. It's, but basic anyone yeah. should uh-huh. know how to swim mm-hmm. so that was her so you can imagine with everything else that's how she was so for me i used to skive my piano classes because i was like this this woman is just forcing <laughs> things down us but later in life i, I was like You know I wish I knew how to play the piano I wish uh-huh, I stayed in those classes uh-huh, uh-huh. but so it doesn't it's not surprising that art and music were kinder in my life all through exactly yeah but in now in primo did you but did you love it did you the art stuck uh-huh. the music didn't uh-huh. because the mu- and the music I I don't think is the making music part is the performance part mm-hmm. I've always I think in campo it changed but I've not I've always not liked issues with performance in mm-hmm. front of crowds. Yeah, okay. Like I've always felt like do I do we need to do we need to do this? <laughs> do we need to do this? Why don't we just make our art in pub in private mm-hmm. and then show people? In public it's just a show. Yes, I get it. Like that for me that was the important thing. So being forced and of course because of church being told you guys will practice you're going to sing ahead in front of the So for me being good in music was not an asset. Mm-hmm. It will just mean I would have to be singing for everyone. <laughs> But with art you don't need to be told to draw for people. I get it. So that kind of stuck and I loved it. Every week I'd go to Mama Muwo. That was the art teacher. Mm-hmm. Show her my sketches for the week. She criticizes them. And then I go on. So basically every week I would be making my own drawings by it. myself, no supervision, just things I like whether it's a cartoon or whatever. I just make my own drawings then I compile all those pieces of paper sometimes it was just a box of omo I just take to her she looks at everything she will be like ah oh, yeah this one this is really good but the scale the head looks a bit bigger than it should be this is how you scale a human being things like that what yeah yo and this is in primary yeah that was in primary okay like from standard 4 to about standard 6 I was doing that And, at, and of course at that time art and craft is a subject yes in, in case it's a it subject yeah. so combine that with school but in school we never used to draw much mm-hmm. which i found odd it was more so the, the because we are studying art but we are not drawing <laughs> exactly true yeah exactly true okay so um what how does the story continue now high school yeah so from there then in primo i move uh moved to lukenya academy in 7 oh, and in primo yeah okay for boarding there i don't think much happened that is life changing was just 7 and 7 and 8 is just studying for kcp <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing else but then high school but why did you move why yeah. i don't know okay i think i don't know I actually don't know 
I don't think our parents afforded us the like, okay, so you're moving to this school because this and this and this. But my dad was friends with the principal mm-hmm. at Lukenya. So I, I think it. it made sense. Maybe okay. it was like, yeah, I have a school. You should bring your kids also. Okay, why not? Okay. So we went there. My sister was in Standard 5 at the time. Um, then from there, went to Machakos High School. And which was really good because it was neighboring, literally sharing a fence with my home, which is Machakos Teachers College. <laughs> so weekends I would be able to just skive, go home, yeah. come back. But Machakos Boys, I never lasted long. The significant thing for me in Machakos Boys that I remember till today was that in fine art class, the whole term, one, excuse me, one whole term, we never once drew anything. In fine art? Fine art. We never do anything, we just did theory. What? So that's just put a pin in that. Mm-hmm. I didn't last there for long. There was a strike. My dad was at the time the head or the chairman of the board of governors. It's called chairman or head, something like that. So the people, students strike so that the headmaster goes because they're like, oh no, he's not right for this school. So of course, a headmaster goes, you go with your board of governors. Yeah. <laughs> so when. Oh, shucks. Yeah. Yeah. So my dad was no longer board of governors. Mm-hmm. So when he left, when they left, I didn't think I was going to move schools. But then come second term, my dad says we are going to, you're going to another school. Like okay, MFA in Nairobi. Oh, and for me that was the, like my first experience with Nairobi properly. Mm-hmm. Like as an adult, where I understand what's going on. Mm. Forget the coming to showground and those trips because yeah. we used to do those as kids. Yeah, yeah. But that was the first time. So I go to MFA, get to school, like a, a week or two into opening. The first class I attend there is fine art. Because I remember, in fact, the teacher was standing on the on the corridor because I got there lunchtime and I remember I could that lunch. Because <laughs> the food in MFA was so much better than the one in Machakos Boys. <laughs> guys were like, ah, so you've just come from home, you're not eating. I was like, eh, rice and beans, my goodness, you guys don't know what you're missing. <laughs> I was like, if you guys knew the food that we were eating in Machako school, yeah. you'd not tell me not to eat. But then the teacher, I remember, you know, there was option for us, there was option four, which had kind of home science, fine art, agriculture, ele- electricity, stuff like that, those yeah. subjects. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then there was option five, the one with the languages, the French, mm-hmm, business, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. I remember immediately after lunch, it was option four. So I needed to pick one. So the teacher was just saying, yeah, there's woodwork, there's this. They said, there's fine art. I was like, that's the one. So went straight. So at this time, you already know. You're, already you're, you're in love. You're in yeah. love. You're in love with this. I knew it was not even a question. Did you, did you know what you wanted to be? Yes, I did. I knew what I wanted to be when I was in Standard 6. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting moment. I think it's a life changing, but I didn't know, of course, at that time. Mm-hmm. And in Standard 6, one of my neighbors in Machakos Teachers College, um, the eldest son was studying architecture in J-Quart. Mm-hmm. And we used to go and play with his younger brother, now who was more our age. Yeah. We used to go and play touch rugby in his house because he was in high school playing rugby. So he used to come and teach us primo kids. Like, okay, this is how you do rugby. So we used to go to his house a lot. And when we went there, when we go inside the house, he had his architecture desk over there with the plans, the blueprints, and there were models of houses. Mm. And I remember those models of houses are the ones I saw. And I was like, what's this? He said, this is something called architecture. We design houses. And I remember th- it was very clear to me that I think this is what I want to do with my life. Class six. Class six. And so it just put it like I knew that. Yes. It, and it, then it, that's it. It, it got saved somewhere yeah, in the back. It was saved in my head. So, so now in every, everything, every, uh-huh. for me, everything is about studying architecture, like eventually. But you so figured this out in class six? Yeah. Whoa, that's deep. So primary, so in high school, I kind of knew, okay, I really want to do fine art. So I was like, I hope fine art helps me to get closer to architecture mm-hmm. because I really don't want to do anything else. <laughs> in, even though there was technical drawing, which to me, I felt like technical drawing was closer, but I was like, I'm not going through technical drawing when this fine art. <laughs> yes. Both must help in studying architecture, so I picked that. So I remember my choices of what I wanted to study, but you see also it wasn't like... And explain to me, what's, what's, what's 
what's the difference between technical drawing and fine art? So fine. What That's the the biggest difference, in my opinion, was that in technical drawing, you're always using rulers. Mm -hmm. In fine art, it's your mind and your fingers that are just mm -hmm. deciding. Like fine art is expressive, technical drawing is literally that. I it's guess, technical. technical drawing. It has a point. Uh -huh. It's not for fun. So that's why you're right when you say architecture, technical drawing was a closer. Yeah, I thought it was closer. That's uh -huh. what I thought. Oh, that's what he thought. But put another if, pin in, in that. In fact, that's what I even I think now. <laughs> yeah, but put a pin in that because <laughs> I discovered things later that were like, so everything in my life was leading towards something and even even if, even the things that I didn't think were. Okay, I get it. Yeah, so I did, went to fine art class and you know the first thing that we, I get told when this, I enter. This is from one. It's from one in MFA. In MFA, yes. After a semester of not drawing anything in fine art class in Machako School. Yes. In MFA, I get into the class. They say there's a new student. He's called Mutua. He wants to do fine art. The teacher, we used to call him Da Vinci, tells me, "Okay, sit there, draw something." Whoa. What, how happy were you? I was like. <laughs> Okay, I've never been asked to do this, but I've been preparing for this. So I drew Mickey Mouse. <laughs> because in Primo, all I've been doing is drawing cartoons. So I just drew Mickey Mouse. He was like, okay, you're nice. welcome, you're going to stay. No, oh, nice. So I kept asking myself, if people come and they draw something bad, are they chased out? I don't know, because I came late, so I can't, I can't uh. tell if that's what happens. But yeah, so I was in fine art and I thrived. I mean, fine art, I don't think I ever got anything less than an 80. What? Ever. Like I loved that stuff. And you didn't pick up technical at any point? Never. So aside, was is there anything else that you feel is worth noting in, in MFA? Music? Have you touched music? No, nothing. Well, actually, yes. Mm -hmm. So in MFA, I was doing art, fine art, and I loved it. That was like my strongest thing. Then, Later, as I was getting more confident, because remember, all my life I've not been, um, not extremely introverted, but my introvert side is strong and clear. Mm. But I found out much later, which explains, you know, how I felt all through primo and high school of not being able to socialize well, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So in MFA, first year, I was that guy who did not even like going on funkies. Because funky is this pressure that you have to talk to chicks. I'm like, <laughs> who needs this pressure? I will just pretend uh, that I... And then I was the shortest kid. I was the youngest. Well, I was in Form 1. Mm -hmm. Like I was always... Because I started school early. So yeah. I was always the youngest, always the smallest. Mm -hmm. That did not help the confidence. By the time I get to Form 3, because of the fine art, I was so good at it that everyone in school knew there's a certain... Even from when I was in Form 1, People always knew, there's a like Kaform 1, hey, it's mm -hmm. bringing fire. Yeah. So like everyone kind of knew there's a like Kaform 1 over there, or there's a Form 2, still undefeated. <laughs> so me and a guy called Steve Gitonga, Steve Anthony Gitonga, uh -huh. SAG, yes. were the two guys who were always, he had a style that's very different from me, but we were always really good in fine art. Mm -hmm. So for me that boosted, it was like the thing which everyone knows me for that thing, I'm really good at it. Like you can't take it away from yeah, the me. The guy was writing calligraphy letters. I was chicks. actually. <laughs> By the way, I was that guy. And drawing, I used to draw, um, I used to make special full scaps for guys that are painted in the, in the <laughs> bottom. Like you see the way it's like this. Yeah. So I paint part of this in watercolor, just some flavor. Yeah. And then someone letter. buys that, she writes his love letter there. Oh, you are hey, saying? Hey, of course, it's a hustle. <laughs> What's that how you pull up bread? That was not my first hustle actually. Uh -huh. My first hustle was selling, well, it was a job job, but after some date, I worked at my uncle's store for selling uniforms in Macha uh -huh. for about three months. That period, that transition period. Of class eight to yeah. now from one, yeah. So December, that, that was November, the first time you ever December, earned money for yes. yourself. November, December, January, I was working. What? for 3k a month. <laughs> hey, back then, that's good. By the way, for a kid in high school, that I was know, just so like, hey, not paying rent. I like. I'm not paying anything. <laughs> I'm even being driven to work. Ah, nice. So it was nice. That money, I spent it all in Gikomba. All of it, all of it. <laughs> Friends. Nothing. I was like, mom, I'm not wearing your silk shirts anymore. <laughs> 
So let me ask you. Aside now, now you're in MFA. This is happening. You, you are. Where are you in terms of the architect journey? What are you seeing? Uh, is there? You see, with music, I can ask who are you watching and who was inspiring and who did you want to yeah. be. With architect and fine art, how do you yeah. ask? Like, what what inspires? Why you, did you? Ama, you just used to go and look at buildings and be like, hey, by the way, I never. I don't think it's weird that that's interesting because there's no one I ever looked in looked up to. Mm. that I knew who was an architect first of all. Oh no wait, there was one person. Apart from that person Don't tell me the guy called Jack. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> no, the guy the guy that who his house, his oh, brother yes, was my yes, friend. Apart from, yes. So him I knew mm-hmm. and he studied act in Jaquat. Yes. So that's why even me I wanted to do architecture in Jaquat. Ah yeah 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 yeah. Then so already he you see that's why I was asking about yeah. that. The... So him was the only guy I knew. Then in Primo in Primo in Lukenya the owner of the school i was classmates like his son the owner the owners of the school the son mm-hmm. oh, was the owners, not the headmaster the owners yeah the owners of the school also the owner the wife was also the principal okay. because she was she was a teacher uh-huh. so her son was like my best friend we used to be desk mates in primo he had two elder sisters one used to teach us math by the time we why i was in standard date i think she just gotten into jquat to study architecture mm-hmm. so that's the second person now i knew that went to study architecture and she's still a practice in architect right now yeah the other guy the first one is a practice in architect i think in botswana mm-hmm. yeah so those are the only two people i knew but other than that i didn't i honestly don't know that i got into architecture because oh houses i can't even i think i just saw it so a model of a house it's so okay. i was at like, this looks exciting i want to do this mm-hmm. so i had no like history of all architecture i, I was interested in the idea of people designing uh-huh. houses at sg you know this is what they do i didn't know any of that stuff i figured i see i'll just find out when i get there i get yeah. okay so now um what happens now after you after high school ends what's what's next for mutua so after by the way do guys call you mutua in, in machakos Yeah they call him Mutua. Oh okay. Sir. As opposed to what? No, you thought he had a nickname. No, you don't know the case. It's only people that have been with that call me Mutz. Oh okay. Okay. But most people when it's kind of official they call me Mutua. Okay, Mutua, sir. Mutua. Yeah, so high school by the time I'm finishing high school, you know, all my focus is on getting the points to do architecture. Yeah. So I know architecture needs 43 points. Mm-hmm. And I knew that my weakest thing is I have to get good at math for the sake of architecture not because I love math <laughs> but for the sake I okay, get just for the sake of architecture so I worked towards that I knew that needed a minus now all my life in high school the highest mark I ever got was a C plus in maths no 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 generally oh okay highest in all exams mm-hmm. the whole of high school i never got i wasn't a danda yeah. but i just never got more than a c plus yeah. never ever so it sounded very weird and i remember i used to that my all my form 4 prayers were for just god i need an a minus and of at least 43 points to study architecture in jeco that's all i need that's all i want what that's all i want don't even give me an a an A is useless to me. <laughs> I might be called to become I might, you might give me an A and you they decide I be a doctor. Uh, you know the way yeah, they yeah. Do, they used to do that a lot like someone will say ah now that you have an A why Go are you with, wasting it on architecture yes. which needs a minus just be a doctor I didn't want any of that by the way. I was very specific. And I remember one of my first like down points with my dad ever. Mm-hmm because it just got and separated <sighs> these stories are all over the place yeah, it's okay, sorry no. it just got and separated from my mom when i was in form 2 mm-hmm. so that's a weird that was a weird time and then when i was in form 4 just the last ka holiday i went to stay with him with the chick that he was now snoozing with <laughs> so <laughs> yeah when i say chick is not really chick yeah, but, I know, but yeah yeah is a mother but and she was also a head mistress like my mom was mm. I think this guy had a thing for teachers <laughs> so <laughs> i got to stay with him and i remember 
as I was leaving the house like the, the night before. Mm. So my dad used to love these lectures where he sits you, he tells you who's oh, in and he had points is written for a lecture. Yeah. So I used to he used to be lecturing and when he finishes a point he takes. <laughs> so I would be looking at the paper, I'm like, oh crap, oh we God. have four more points. <laughs> I know we'll be here for another hour. Uh, so by the time that last day I remember him saying, Hey, you the way you've just been playing around here, I've not seen you serious studying for your exams and you're going into the last semester. That A minus, I don't even know if you're going to get, but at least just please try get me a B minus. At least I can work with a B minus. I was so <laughs> pissed. I was like, who does this guy think he is? I remember I just walked out on him, I went to the bedroom. Yeah. The next time he saw me was me saying bye the next day going home. What? So when I got my results, and it was exactly that, an A minus, ah, yeah, yeah, 44 yeah. points. Yeah, 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 yeah. Architecture needed 43. It's like, just God gave me just what I needed. 44 points, A minus. I took my sleep. I took it to him. He said, ah, this is good. But you see now, if you had listened to me, this would have been an A. <laughs> I left the sleep and went. I didn't even respond to that in any line of questioning. Yeah. I was like, just stay with your A's. If you knew that I have not been praying for an A, mm -hmm. if I had prayed for an A, I would have gotten an A. Yeah. I am sure. Because I'd never gotten an A minus all through high school. You had got just C's. C plus highest point. Highest. My average was C. And that C plus I got once. In form four, like first term, so an A minus doesn't make sense, mm. but I got it because it's what I needed. So and and, and at this time, for sure, you know where you're going. And I know if I mean by that time, you know people are not that many. Yeah, you're almost sure that if you got the points you wanted, you're, you'll you're get in. the thing that you wanted. Okay, I have this question to ask. Yeah, mm. and the reason why I ask this question is because our offices were at the navigators. Yeah. And the director of the navigators was a guy called Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once in a while, I would go and have conversations with him. Yeah. And he'd be like, do you know Mutua was a member of the navigators? Yeah. And, uh, so I'd, so is, did this happen immediately after the high school? Because I know yes. what they do is they yes, take yeah. guys. Okay. Yeah, after high school. Yeah, and yeah how that's that what happened. And how that you? So the thing that happened At this time, are you is, in God? Because... Yeah, so, like, okay. So the thing is, almost all my life, I've been born a Christian, oh. raised a Christian. My mom deliberately um, talked to my sister and I when I was in standard six, she was in standard four, to specifically tell us, like, okay, this is the story. Now, now apart from the usual um, prayers and mm -hmm. before sleeping and the devotions and all that, to tell us, okay, so this is what Christ did. He did this for you. He died for you he would like you to accept you into his heart. So she specifically led us to Christ mm -hmm. when I was in standard six. Hey, your mom is intentional. So she was very intentional hey, about that. She's an intentional woman. And I remember I was like, I mean, this is what we've been learning all our lives. So yeah, so I said yes. Of course, I didn't understand it. Yeah. But I was like, yes, I would like. So that was the first time that I, I remember I received Christ knowingly. And I remember that it was in August in when I was in Salad 694. Okay. So then what made you then go into the... How then, did you connect to the navigators? Yeah. So from there, all my life is just basically just a shielded Christian kid, not really interacting with anyone who's not a Christian. Because like my family, everyone else around us, everyone is basically Christians. <laughs> we all go to church. Is that why you all... met Bupe? <laughs> yeah, I met Bupe by there at Navigators. Okay, okay. So after high school... Not in Machakos. Still in Machakos. No, I'm saying all the navigators was in Yeah, was Machakos. in Machakos. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So after high school, you know that one year that you're just at home? Mm. At that time I went back to help my uncle in that shop. Selling because I was like, as long as I don't have anything to do, let me sell uniforms. At that time it increased the fee, it was like ten K a month. Whoa. So it was good. So I was like, as long as I don't have anything to do, I'll just work at the shop. It makes money, why not? Then I heard about navigators and they had a specific, because of the navigators, which is like an adult ministry, but they had a specific wing that was a, for the youth. X and it was called XCAN. Yeah. So I was like, why not? Then met so many people that are even now still my friends, met Bupe there, um, many other guys, just okay. guys hanging out and we'll hang out after church. 
and there will be many things. It will be friendship, it will be conversations, it will be learning stuff about God, but it will be very, it was a very cool fellowship. In fact, that was probably one of my favorite things about that one year after Form 4. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I did, still did music in there, yeah. because in high school, the part that we didn't say, by the time I was in Form 3, I was part of an a cappella group that used to sing a lot, not for music festivals, yeah. but like we will sing CU stuff, like when there's a CU something, we'll come and sing. Of course, we're singing for the, you know, for the, for the... <laughs> for the honey. Yeah. Because <laughs> a cappella ish, a cappella in high school, but now you guys are killer. So... But in, in this, there's nobody who would be with 501 who's in this? In no. This? Okay, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Then, after that, in Xcan, because I was in music, a few other guys. So we kind of came together, we started just singing. We will sing mostly also a cappella. Mm -hmm. Because a cappella was just easier. And do you remember the name of the group? Um, uh, what was the name of that group? The name of that group was Traverse. <laughs> Traverse, I think it was Traverse. I think it was Traverse. So that was just for that one year though, because our paths were going to get different. different but we yes. sang a cappella, we will praco, sing in places. Um, navigators will meet in every Sunday, and for me that was really and this is that in was Machacos. Really, yeah, in Machacos. Okay. In fact, the, that ex can ministry in Machacos was way stronger than even in Nairobi, mm -hmm. because I remember Chris. That's where I also met Chris. There was a house there. There was the Chris at that time was not yet a big boss. <laughs> he was just in charge of ex can, yeah. and he had a boss who was called Mutonga who they've now since moved to TZ. So we'd meet in their house a lot. And I started, also for me, that was like my first fight for freedom. Now kind of distancing myself from the life I've been through and been shielded to now trying to get my own thing. Where, you know, like when, when you start coming home, like eight, yes. nine, <laughs> that's like the beginning of kind of freedom. Yeah. Not yet of, 18. Of, yeah but kind of finding that, hey, this is my thing. So started fighting with the folks about that. Well, not really the folks, my mom, because my dad was not with us. Yeah. So we'll be fight a lot about that. Oh, come home early, Eugene. It was just, you know, starting to... Become a man. Yeah. Or become so for me, yeah, to become independent. In fact, that's the thing. Mm. So it's like some work here, independence. That was the first step. And then what? Then from there, the year ends mm -hmm. and it's Campo. J Quat now. Yeah, J Quat. Mm 